Tonight on Hip on the Spot News. The Mirage F1 takes the skies with a barrel roll. The Tomcat and the Vigan race for the finish line of early access. The FAG Crusader scans the coastlines. And the mysterious user gives us pictures of the Strike Eagle and the Super Carrier Briefing Room. This and more on How I Play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I am Andre Celeste and today we are going to take a look at the latest news updates in DCS world. And first up is the F-16. The Viper will be updated in July with a correct harm loadout adjustment. More precisely, Station 4 and 6 will have no umbilical connection and thus no communication with the MC. Also in July, we can expect the AGM-154A and the CBU-103 and 105. Cool, now let's move on. Aegis Engineering announced that their C-101 Aviojet has reached its final version state in the latest open beta update. After finishing multi-crew and implementing the combined control mode, the module is now complete but they assure that the product support and bug fixing will continue. The team is now gearing up to accelerate work on their existing upcoming new module that we covered last year in November in our On The Spot news. None other than the Mirage F1. In a recent video, we saw the progress of the F1 CE cockpit, an external model, PBR textures with more work left to be done for the pilot and helmet models. According to the team, the flight model is very close to its final state, featuring effects like wing bending due to high g-forces, wing torsion that causes a change in the AOA throughout the wingspan and the roll movement, and once testing is done, they will be ready for an early access release. Also nearly finished are the cockpit interaction with most of the general aircraft systems like engine, fuel, electrics, hydraulics, stability augmentation and autopilot. And they are still working on the avionics with navigation, radio equipment, weapon control, radar, displays and so on. And they also mention a list of more than 80 possible system failures being implemented. With no doubt the project is advancing at a good pace. And the fact that it's getting ready for the early access phase can only give us hope to see this amazing aircraft very soon in DCS world. Moving on, Heat Blur is advancing with their roadmap and their focus on the Tomcat and Vigan, looking to bring both of these aircrafts out of early access. After the last week's major VAF-14 patch, they are now preparing the next big update that will include the Jester Lantern and the Mighty Forestall Carrier. Here is our last year coverage of the Forestall class carrier news. Let's remember that the Hitler F14 project announced the free DCS additions of the Forestall, Ranger, Saratoga and Independence Forestall class carriers, among other free included content. July 19th, 2018, stated by Hitler Simulations. Along the way we got screenshots with early models of the carrier. Since then, the new pictures of the carrier look more complete. At first glance, I even thought they were shot in real life. Next is Rasbam Simulations. And a few pictures showing off their development progress for the BO-105, a light twin-engine multi-purpose helicopter developed by Bulkov of Ottobrunn, West Germany. It was the first light twin-engine helicopter in the world and the first rotorcraft that could perform aerobatic maneuvers such as inverted loops. The interior textures are looking good, they are made with the great attention to detail and we also get some more information on different switches that will be located on the collective and other surfaces. And a full cockpit shot plus a hot Euro missile. Sticking with Rasbam, we covered not too long ago their MiG-23 development progress and they posted a few pictures stating that next time they'll be fully mapped and textured. And a small update of the new Harrier manual from the famous Baltic Dragon slated for the end of summer with a plan to update all the training missions accordingly. When we hear that the Baltic Dragon is busy, we know good stuff are about to happen in DCS world. We move on with Red Star Simulations and the development update for their MiG-17. Work on the EFM has started and they are adding all the flight dynamic and engine parameters. With progress being made in the cockpit, the MiG-17F and the AS will have individual cockpits to account for the difference between the two versions. They posted some pictures that show off the 76mm unguided rockets attached to the launchers. 
They were used in Egypt and Nigeria, and we can have either 4 or 8 of these in total. Also the FAB-50 bomb which will come in different colors depending on the aircraft skin that we choose. And also the biggest rocket we will be able to use with a MiG-17, the S-21. Red Star promised to add many different liveries for the MiG-17 from all around the world. Next up in DCS news, Leatherneck Simulation posted their 2021 summer update. Their primary focus is the Corsair Warbird, the SX class aircraft carrier and the Crusader Snippet. As the F4U-1D Corsair module occupies their attention almost exclusively, it comes with no surprise to hear that the module is in the final stages of development. With most of the artwork and system programming nearing completion and the flight model and engine operations are in process of fine-tuning and testing. As the Corsair is one of the few aircrafts who don't have sidewalls or a floor and many vital components are exposed, it demands a lot of work, with a special attention to recreate most of the panels, cables, pipes and switches. The team has also updated the cockpit model and adjusted the textures. They also specified that each area was checked within VR to ensure that nothing will be missing. Items that will be modeled during early access include the armor glass and the adjustable MK-8 gun sight. Also hydraulic, electric and basic weapon systems are operational and getting fine-tuned together with the AN ARC 5 radio and navigation equipment. As we get closer to release, Leatherneck Simulations promise to post a full list of British and US bombs, rockets and additional equipment that we will have at our disposal for the Corsair. And as a reminder, a set of missions and a campaign are also planned and will be done in cooperation with Reflected Simulations. And with all the works being done on the Corsair, Leatherneck is also preparing the SX class aircraft carrier. The hangar bay is getting developed with the intention to make it possible for us to spawn inside of the carrier, start of the Corsair and bring it to the main deck. Well, that's just great news. Immersive. We can just imagine the Marianas Islands, the carrier and the Corsair. Next up is the F-8G Crusader. With work being done to the radar system, while the ground mapping functionality of the ANAPQ-124 is very limited, the radar can be used for coastal mapping. They also posted a screenshot and a video displaying major geological features from the radar's return of the coast. Also the team managed to get some photogrammetry of the cockpit, specifying that their initial work wasn't that far off from the real deal. Work will continue in adjusting the geometry. Now as we speak, the DCS World Summer Sale 2021 is going on and will last until the 12th of July. With up to 50% discount on most popular modules and 30% for the F-18 Hornet, the A-10C Tank Killer and the Super Carrier. The sale is also available on Steam as we speak. Recently on our Discord we got two exclusive views, or I think they are exclusive, from one of our mysterious users called Vat. Now I wonder who it is. One of them is from the Super Carrier Briefing Room, depicting a shelf filled with all kinds of stuff that you would find in a room of a virtual pilot just like us. The other is a cockpit view from the pilot's perspective of the currently under development F-15E by Rasbam. We thank our mysterious user for these two pictures and I wish him all the best on behalf of the entire team here at Hip Games. Now the latest DCS Open Beta patch was released last week, patch notes are in the video description, not much to be said about it, some important fixes for the MI24P and more. Starting with the 4th of July, DCS On The Spot News will be in vacation for 3 weeks. And we will strive to post other videos in the meanwhile, so do not worry, as soon as we come back we will be on the spot with a special show after the 25th of July. Thank you all for watching, remember to like our video and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news from your favorite simulators and games. I'm Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.